We are recording. Yep. How's it going? Good. Classic New England day. We went from cool and raw to 80 degrees. Uh, we could use some rain now. Yeah. Um. All right, so Natalie Ridegam is in, and she is from. Oh, the church in South Amherst wants to plant some crab apples, but Natalie, we're just waiting for everyone to join in until we have a quorum. Hello, Ellen. Hello. And Britt's here too. Hello. Hello. Everybody's outside. I came in. <laughs> One more for a quorum. Oh, Julian's here. All right. Britt and Julian, are you still not getting the link, the official link? Um, I saw an email from you, Henry, but did it have a link in it? No, but you should get a link, a official email from Amber from the town. I've never once received an I, official link. I don't think I've had Check. ever received that either. Check I spam and all that. I haven't checked spam. I, I usually done. just go to the website and click on that. Okay. Same. Well, it'd be good if you see if you get that and then you could, yeah. yeah she sent it on May, May 3rd is when she sent the email out, so. What was that? Amber? May 3rd? Is the name? Yeah. Amber Taylor. What's May 3rd? That's when she sent the email out. <clears throat> yeah. And it says you are invited to a webinar. Yeah. Something like that in the heading. I will check my spam. Okay. Shauna says she's a couple minutes late. She'll be there soon. Uh, we have a quorum, so we could start. Uh, and just watch if somebody else is coming in. Uh, Kelly is here. OK. OK, yes, I do see something. Alan, you're right. On the third um, in my junk, it has yeah. Um, yep. So I'll join on that link next time. Sorry. Yeah. Just make sure just to authorize that email come forward. Yep. I don't have anything unless she sent it to my UMass email, which would be weird. That's whatever email you registered with the town, I would assume. Yeah, that would be my Gmail. Okay. Uh, Kelly, um, if you don't get promoted to panelist, you may not be able to join the meeting and speak. So um, it's up to you. I tried to say allow you to talk, but it said you couldn't do that. So um, let me try again. Oh, no, it's allowed. Okay, that worked this time. I don't know why it didn't last time. 
Hi, hello, how are you? Thank you. Good. So Kelly wants to plant a tree in honor of her brother. So we'll get started and then we'll get to you guys pretty quick. Um, I just want to remind everybody that this video, this uh, Zoom meeting is being recorded and will be available uh, at the, after the work day on Friday. Okay. And we will need a note taker, minute taker, since Bennett's not here. I can do it. Oh, Britt, okay, thanks, great. All right, so welcome everyone. Um, I'll keep an eye on who's coming in meantime. Um, first thing is uh, call to order announcements and public comments. So yeah, Kelly, do you wanna speak first? All right, I don't mind. I can only um, see myself on the screen, so I'm not how many people I'm speaking with. Um, but my brother is a graduate of Amherst College. He's lived in the town for about uh, 11 years. He's done his undergraduate and master's um, at, a, at UMass University. Um, so I wanted to have a tree planted in his honor. He'll be relocating to Boston. His heart is really in Amherst. It's been um, difficult. And I saw your organization online and I just thought it would be a really great memorial uh, option to feel like he's still growing within the town, still a part of it. And um, Kelly and I traded a few emails through the Shade Tree Committee email thing. Um, I said we could uh, consider doing it, but um, yeah, I invited her to come here. We wouldn't be able to put a plaque in the ground and she offered to buy the tree and we would just help her plant it. So did you have a location in mind, Kelly? Um, I just wanted to know more about how your process works. Uh, I didn't know if some, if I could, if I, my perfect preference would be by the baseball field near Amherst, but I don't know if you just do things outside of the actual college. Um, I didn't know if you, and I read online that sometimes you guys are already planting trees in certain areas um, that's budgeted for, so I didn't know if I could just um, maybe be part of one of those tree planting ceremonies. I'm, I'm at the mercy of how this is done, so. Okay. Well, we plant trees all over town. Um, we're basically in charge of trees along the street within the right of way of the town. We sometimes do park plantings as well. We're not related to Amherst College at all, um, although we sometimes can plant on the edge of their property if it's by the road. Um, so baseball fields, i um, not sure where they are. Alan, you would know that better. They're by the football um, field. Yeah, if you're talking about the Amherst College Baseball or Town of Amherst baseball? I believe it's, um, well, actually, either. I, if there's a Town of Amherst baseball field and that's more accessible for a tree, I think that would be quite nice. Yeah, so we do have uh, a Zomek field off of Triangle Street and the football field complex next to the regional high school um, is one. We do have um, locations that are parks like Qantas Park off of Stanley Street. Um, need some trees. Uh, if there's a place that has a need, I'm sure that, you know, his fingerprints are all over the town. We're going to be in the area of Stanley Street for that other planting anyway. Right. I was just thinking that. Okay. So uh, Anna Carter, who's uh, lives at Misty Meadows, has been coordinating that. She said they're going to have a meeting and she's hoping to get the planting done in mid-June. Um, so we could add your tree and then do, uh, it'll be an extra planting. It's not going to be our regular second Saturday, probably, but um, we could do an extra planting and plant three trees, two at Misty Meadow and one for your brother near the fields. If that sounds good, Kelly. It does, it does. How, how would that process go? Uh, how much is a, is a tree? Or is it part of? I just I want to know what would, would be needed for me. I didn't quite understand that. So I can, I'll try to answer that question. Um, the, so you have, there are two options. One is that you, you know, we, you and I could meet, we could look at the location or we could just email and discuss the location. Um, and then I would come up with a species that would be appropriate for that location. Um, you could investigate looking to purchase a tree at one of the local nurseries. 
um, whatever you know fits into your your price range. You know, they're for a decent size, like two and a half inch caliper tree. Um, you're looking at you know three hundred, four hundred dollars um, for a tree like that. Um, then we do have we have some trees. We have some ornamental trees. Um, that were donated to the town last fall that we need to plant. Um, so we could also use one of those to as a um, you know as a memorial tree. Uh, it's an honor, not a memorial. An honor. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, when will those trees be going in? The ones that you just mentioned. Well, it sounds like the committee. You know, is working on a planting mid June. Um, since we already have, we have the trees already, so um, we could plant. I have to plant these trees that were donated um, as soon as possible. Um, so I could work on getting that planted at any time. You know, once we make a decision. Uh, I, I will be there this, I live in New York, by the way. Um, oh. I'll be there this weekend um, in the town. So I didn't know if there was any planting for them this weekend or um, like a spot I could take him to and say, you know, in the weeks to come, something would be here. Um, I'm just trying to put it all together mentally. Yeah, I don't think I could, um, I don't think we could get it done this weekend because we'd need to bring the committee involved in that, I think. No, of course, certainly. I'm imagining yeah. this process. But to pick the location, um, Alan, if you want to look at the area and suggest the location, put a stake there, then um, one of us could meet Kelly this weekend and mm -hmm. see if she likes that location. Oh my God, that would be really, really, really special and kind and sweet to do. If it's not out of anyone's way, I'll be there for three days so I can work with anybody, you know, Friday, Saturday. <laughs> Yeah, I can do that. I can put a stake in the ground over at the uh, Kiwanis Park, which is off of Stanley Street. Okay. Anybody able to meet Kelly? I could possibly meet Friday. I can't Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Friday would be great. Um, if you have a preferred time, if you have a preferred coffee order, whatever I can do. <laughs> so just thank you. Well, let me go quickly look at my calendar. I'll be right back. Kelly, we have, um, if you want to write these down, you can um, look them up. We have a uh, Kwanzaa cherry. We have a yellow birch. We have a, a Washington hawthorn. Um, and I think that's it. Okay, I can do some research on this species. Yeah, and I'm free. Um, looks like um, Friday afternoon would probably work. Okay. Is there an email or a phone number um, that you prefer as a means of contact? Well, I have your email. I will send you my phone number through email. Okay, okay perfect. You can pick a time for Friday. Okay, perfect. All right. Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much. Anyone on the committee have other comments? Um, Kelly, do you plan to put a sign up or something? I didn't because I don't know the latitude with that. Um, and if I, I figured, you know, the tree is, is more than enough as a symbol. If I'm allowed, uh, I will, I can certainly look into something like that. But no, I had no intention to really mark okay. the area. Yeah, there is a process to go through if you want to do that it involves the town council and a, a request. Mm -hmm. They vote on it. And we don't do it very often, actually. We try to avoid doing markers because they get difficult to maintain and things like that. I'm oh, sure. It yeah. could be added to our inventory. We have a tree inventory, which is online and anybody can look at it. Um, it's a public document. And, you know, 
in that inventory, when we enter it, we can have a picture of the tree. Maybe if, if we get a picture of you standing next to it, and that can be attached to the tree um, in the inventory. So okay. 50 okay. years, if someone wants to look at it, then we picture there. Yeah. All right, so we will plant the tree. Um, if it's one of our trees that were donated, then you could make a donation to the committee, but it wouldn't be obligated. Um, and then we'll we'll get it in the ground in June. But I will meet you on Friday. Okay, wonderful. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And all right, uh, who else? Is someone else new? Okay, hold on one second. Just check the attendee list. All right, Natalie, you're up. Natalie? Okay, now can you hear me? Yes. All right, actually, uh, the answer may have already been given, and I have talked to uh, Alan. Uh, I'm a member of South Congregational Church, and for our 200th, we are adding some pollinators to the meadow. We have about five acres behind the church. It's open to the public, both from uh, Station Road and from the back of the church. Many people use it and walk through, but uh, we were interested in, we're going to put in three crab apple trees, small ones, uh, because there was an apple orchard at one point. And we were actually interested, we're trying to find out where one can find signs or have signs made, but I already can tell, and Ellen shared that with me, you're not really into the sign making business. But um, so anyway, it's, it's interesting to hear what you're doing, but it, you might just know that um, at any point in time that the meadow is open to all people and we're doing our best to plant pollinators as we get money over the over the years and months, months and years. And we appreciate what you did on the common and what you do. Trees are very important. Yes. So what do you want from us right now? Well, actually, I don't, I think I found out that you, I, what I want, I'm not going to get. And I kind of got that the other day from Alan. I just wondered if you had a source of sign making. I mean, I've seen signs on trees. I've been to the uh, Arboretum at Applewood, and there's all different kinds of trees that are signs that can be attached to a tree or in front of a bush. But for the life of me, I don't know who makes them. And I've talked to Doug Albertson at, uh, um, well, at all these different nature groups, and maybe at some point I'll find out something. If any of you have any ideas, give it, tell me, share it. That's it. I won't take any more time, but I'm interested in what you do. I don't have uh, an idea. Anyone else? I was interested that Ellen asked the question, I think, uh, of um, of Kelly if she wanted a sign. So I I jumped in there wondering. Okay. Anyway, that's, a, that's enough. I don't want to take up a lot of your time, but I hope in time you walk through the meadow. Thank you. Anyone else have comments? Britt. It's a separate comment. If we're okay. included with, yeah. Um, this is a, as a, a resident and not as a committee member, but I have two um, dying cherry trees directly in front of my house that I wanted to bring uh, to Alan's attention. So Alan, I'll follow up with you on that. Um, okay. All right. There's there's street trees to be clear. Yeah, I know which ones you're talking about. Yeah. So we might have to do a planting in your neighborhood too. <laughs> okay, good. Let's uh, do ours quickly. Um, I'll go around and collect Ellen. Um. Wow. I can't even think. Um. Maybe two. Okay, including this meeting. Yeah. Okay, Britt? Um, 
we had the sustainability did, festival. Yeah, we did the sustainability planting. festival, which was maybe like four, and then the work at the um place with the trees that I forgot. The <laughs> nursery. nursery. There we go. <laughs> Don't forget um, the B City USA application. We'll call that three. Oh yeah, B City. Maybe like three more. That's ten, and then this meeting. Let's say twelve. Okay. That's a lot. I forgot about the sustainability um, festival. So you can put me down, I think, for five then. Okay. Julian? Probably 10, thereabouts. Yeah. Okay. Shoshana? 12. 12? Yep. And uh, I was thinking eight, but actually, including sustainability festival and yeah, it's probably 12 for me. So. I'll get them from Sarah and Bennett. Okay. Uh, good. All right. Uh, minutes from last month. There was one problem with them, actually. There were two names with question marks. And I don't know if they were there, the people. Um, Stephen, maybe, and Brooks Bellinger. Who took minutes oh. last month? Was that you, Britt? Or Ellen? I think it I think it was me, but I don't remember putting question marks. Um or maybe they were finances. listed. I, I could speak for Steve, maybe. I think he was he's also in our church. He's a state geologist, but he's we're all part of the meadow group. I don't yeah. think he actually was able to attend, but I may be wrong. He was bicycling in someplace. I'm just guessing that that's why. We had a recent meeting. It might have been the one before. Okay. Okay. Um, well, maybe we might have to. I had thought Brooks was there two meetings ago, but not that meeting. Is at okay. least. So I'll cross. I don't. Ones. Yeah, I don't remember anybody named Brooks. Wait, I just realized the town records these meetings. We could just go back. And look. Okay. Do you want to look at last month's yeah. meeting and see? Yeah, I'll go right ahead. Just give me a minute. Okay. Great. That's good. So we'll hold off on uh, finalizing these minutes then. All right, uh, chair's report. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. It was a good month. We had, we got a lot done. I felt great. It was really nice to not, even though I wasn't able to be at the um, nursery planting, it was great to know that it all got done and we had help from uh, the Girl Scouts and everything else. So that was very nice. Um, uh, Still watch, waiting for David Matavosian was coming to our meetings and was going to write something up for us, but he hasn't been back, so I don't know what's happening with that. Um, besides uh, Anna Carter, which you talked about, and Natalie, and um, I'm sorry, blanking on your name. Uh, Kelly. Kelly, Kelly, thank you, right. Yes. Besides that, I heard from several people um, this guy from UMass, he's a UMass student, and he's planning to start a business with a bunch of students, and um, he wants to donate the profit from the business to our committee. So I thought he was going to come today, but maybe he said he couldn't make it because it's near final, so next month. His name is Aishwara Prak. I may not be pronouncing it right, but I was like, sure, we'd be happy to take any donations, so I was pleased to hear from him. Could you spell it? A I S H W A R Y A. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'll just interject and say that I checked, and neither of those two individuals were there if we want to approve the minutes without their oh, name. Okay. Do we approve the minutes then? Just without the names, I'd say yes. Yes. Okay. Minutes approved. Good. All right, um, so back to people I've heard from. Um, let's see, I've, okay. Uh, long, uh, the end of Long Meadow Drive, Butternut Lane, that development wanted some trees. Alan, did you ever look to see if that was a, within the public, within 25 feet of the right-of-way? It is not. It is not, okay. So if they want to plant trees, we can help them again, but they're gonna have to supply them themselves. Okay, I will let them know that. Um, it's nice to people are writing to us and 
thinking of us and thinking about trees. So I'm pretty, always happy to see emails from people into our committee email. All right, other than that, um, uh, let me see. Oh, Heatherstone Road. That wasn't on the agenda, but Shoshana, you mentioned that there was a public meeting and some concern about a lot of trees. Did you go to that meeting? Yeah, I went last night and I um, said that we were concerned about street trees and um, Guilford Morin was there and he was like kind of dismissive about it saying like, oh, well, we're not losing a lot of big trees. We're just losing small trees. So, yeah. <laughs> and then another person said that they had um, another commentator said that there was already a lot of trees cut down. I haven't um, inspected the area in like a couple days, so I can't say for sure. I know I had driven by there a few days ago and the trees in the tree belt were cut down um, in the middle of the street as you start going near Alpine Drive. But um, I had thought most of those were dead. I could be wrong. Um, other than that, I haven't seen any others that have been taken down. But if you guys did it today, I wouldn't have known. Yeah, I guess the um because of you know, I expect we're gonna lose some more trees to this the little roundabouts that they're talking. I think they're doing a couple of roundabouts. I don't know. Alan probably knows a lot more about this actually. Yeah, we actually haven't discussed this project yet in our project meetings. Um I've heard a little bit about it. Um we did take down three dead Nori maples in the uh, divider island at the beginning of Heatherstone, coming off of um Elm Road. Um, that's the only, those are the only trees that we've um, removed in that area. There are, um, if that's where they're thinking of putting one of the roundabouts, there is a lot of, um, you know, um, volunteer brushy kind of trees growing along the um, either western side of Heatherstone, where the Divider Island is. Um, Maybe that's what they're talking about, but I have I have not seen a request yet for, um, or or any kind of design, um, for those projects. Is this a more to come? Road? Yes. So we, if there were trees to be cut down, we would have a tree hearing. Yes. But it would be good for us to be up on it. So this is Heatherstone Road. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So good for all of us to take a drive by and you know we can discuss it ahead of time and be proactive rather than wait till the design is already planned and Ellen comes to us with a tree hearing yeah let's all try to do that good thank you for going are they having another meeting or I don't think so okay it's like I I got the impression when I was there that it was really just like a formality like just to hear people talk about it the like the design was already clear and like the bill to the people that are doing it has already been paid and like it's happening um but most of the people that live on the street seem like very in favor of even the roundabout things so there was one other person that was concerned about tree loss may i ask how many people like roughly were there was it a big crowd or not really I couldn't really tell, but there was definitely more people than I had expected. Like, I think like before I spoke, there was probably like maybe about eight people. And then after I spoke, maybe about like five more people. Which like for something like that seems kind of like a good turnout for me. <laughs> definitely. All right, let's keep our eye on that. Um... Uh, the only other things I have, there's a couple of, um, I just heard about a podcast called The Internet of Nature, and they do a lot about trees and um, climate change and trees. So that might be interesting. I downloaded it. I'm going to listen to at least one of the episodes. But if you guys like podcasts, look up The Internet of Trees, Internet of Nature. Um, and then on May 30th, there's a uh, summer tree summit. Uh, I forget which group is organizing, but uh, to be online, you can it cost twenty dollars. But the subject is environmental justice, neighborhoods, and planting trees in those areas. So 
something that's current for us. And that's on the agenda later, so we can talk about that then. Uh, I think that's all I have. Um, Julian? Yeah, um, I have a few things. First one is pretty straightforward, which is someone reached out to me about um, these vines that grow up on the side of the road near uh, on Northeast Street through the guardrail. Um, and they were saying these are cut down every year, um, so on and so forth. Um, and that they shouldn't be because the seeds are sort of being transported and thus can be, can start growing somewhere else. It was some sort of invasive vine, I'm forgetting the name of. Um, but basically I explained, we're the tree committee. We don't um, really have a purview in, in, in invasive vines, but at the same time, he said they weren't impacting any trees, but that it w it was interesting to me that um, that they get carried down the road when they got cut down. And he was proposing other ways of cutting them down that they wouldn't get carried on the road. So um, that was sort of an interesting discussion. Um, the other thing that I had noticed was um, on North Whitney Street, a guy named Jamie contacted me and said that the tree in front of his house that we planted a few years ago died um, or has appeared to die. Um, I didn't actually go out and take a look at it, but um, he said like it sort of might need to be replaced because it's dead. So that's something to keep on our radar. Um, and then the other thing was I saw an interesting video um, on social media that Alan might want to take note of a large group of UMass students were ripping branches um, and even baby trees off downtown and sort of like holding them above their heads and walking through town. Um, I'm not sure if those were public trees or not, but I saw it online and figured that it may be worth someone's attention. <laughs> yeah, our young trees do get um, mauled by individuals, groups. Uh. So I think that's it on my end. Were there consequences? Were the, were, did we lose some trees that we had planted? Uh, I couldn't tell the video. It may have been a full mature tree um, that we planted, or it may have just been a big branch off of a tree. I couldn't mm -hmm. I couldn't exactly tell, but um, I can forward you the video if you want. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing it. There, I did notice some branches snapped off trees that we planted several years ago. So. Maybe that was done. I don't. I don't know. Is there a penalty for that kind of vandalism? If you can catch them, there's a fifty dollar fine. Hmm. Okay, I, I'll send it along to the both of you. I mean, it, you can tell like there's people's faces and stuff in the video, so I'd imagine um, if you guys have an Instagram account, which you probably don't, um, but I'll send it along. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it'd be worth uh, maybe checking with the police if you have the video with their faces. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Are those vines that the person was um, concerned about, those are the ones sort of near Wagner Wood that grow over the guardrail? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that might be their property. I'm not sure, but it definitely sure. yeah. pushes way into the bike lane and it, yeah. it does get a little unruly, but I'm not sure that's even public land. I don't know. I don't know either. Um, okay. There's Japanese knotweed there, which grows over the guard railing. Yeah. And that's then there is, is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it's, um. yeah, that gets mowed, you know, a couple times a year. Two or three Can't times get a rid year. of Japanese knotweed. It's not a vine, but it's no, it's not. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Julian. Uh, Sarah's not here, so we'll skip the treasures report. Uh, let me look at the agenda again. Uh, social media is now. Oh, Tree Warden, Alan, you're next. Sorry. Okay, um, so I'll just say that June 18th in Westboro is the Tree City USA award ceremony. If somebody from the committee wants to go to it. Um, from 9.30 to 2 p.m. Uh, again in Westboro, 
on June 18th. 18th. Um, let's see, the structural soil started going down um, today on the North Common project. So the sidewalks that run along the hardscapes that run along um, Main Street on the North Common. We're all getting structural soils underneath them and they're getting trees planted over there. So that was good to see. And I was there um, monitoring it and doing some um, compaction tests uh, to see how it was going. Alan, do they have a projected opening date for them? Um, I, I, they do, I'm sure. I don't know what it is. And I okay. think they're, they're behind schedule with it, possibly a little bit, but they got a lot of work to do. So. Does um, everyone know what structural soil is? Alan, you want to describe it? Sure. So there's many. There are different types of structural soil, but um, generally speaking, it's 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 a soil product that allows a soil stone, various sized pieces of stone or sand or clay, um, that allows you to compact it enough to support the gray infrastructure, so sidewalks or roads, um, but also the pore size is such that it allows tree roots to grow through it. So um, it's instead of just, you know, compacting the living daylights out of out of the soil and putting down some gravel and compacting that, this is actually a, a soil mixture that allows tree roots to grow through it. So it um, has been very successful. We've been, we've experimented with different types of structural soil in the past um, along with Pleasant Street um, downtown. Um, uh, they also started removing some of the, we wood chipped like with about four to five inches of wood chips around most of the North Common, around the trees, the mature trees and along areas that were compacted. And they started removing some of those wood chips in areas where the soil is gonna be regraded and loamed a little bit. So they've um, begun to do that. Um, and you'll, you'll notice that the tree rings, the mulch around the big trees is shrinking um, into what will be um, a normal size sort of tree ring going forward, um, instead of having a whole area with coarse wood chips. So they're gonna kind of work from the top down as they go um, seeding that area. Um, as they finish. Um, let's see, June 20th, um, the Western Mass Tree Wardens dinner meeting at the Blue Bonnet Diner. Um, I have uh, Michelle Matt Matto from the National Science Foundation, and she's going to be talking about the Sustainable Forest Initiative, um, which they have going and specifically the um, urban and community forestry sustainability standard, which they came up with. So it should be a very interesting conversation talk um, if you wanna learn about you know, really a global look at um, the uh, sustainable urban forestry standard. So it should be good. Um, what else? That's so, sort of what the podcast is about. One of the episodes is about the town of Boulder, um, Colorado, and oh. doing it, that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the tree inventory, uh, I'm in contact with the company. They are trying to schedule the arrival date of their crew that will start inventorying the trees. And um, it sounds like they're going to send a good sized crew and just kind of work their way through our streets, inventorying all our trees. So um, that is coming up. We might have a tree hearing for June, uh, 55 Kellogg Ave, we have a property owner there is doing some landscaping and they would like to remove, potentially, I'm not sure yet, but potentially four hemlocks that range in size from 23 inches in diameter to 11 inches in diameter. Um, these are healthy trees that don't have 
I mean, other than adelgid and normal urban tree issues, um, they don't seem to have any serious structural defects. And then more to follow than that. So we may have to plan a site visit for June, but I'm not sure yet. And I think that's it. All right, thank you. Oh, I did have something else. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the nursery. So I've been watering the trees. We need to add compost to some of the containers. It's settled out and some of the roots are starting to you know, kind of come up. So I don't know if anybody wants to spend some time adding soil to the trees. And we also need to work on possibly staking or guying some of them with rigid stakes, which I have a stockpile of these like bamboo stakes. Um, some of them have, they're kind of flopping, getting low. We could take the, take the bend out of them now, um, help them train to be tall, straight trees. So anybody wants to do that, we can just coordinate with me. Yeah, that's actually on the agenda. So maybe we could pick a time, maybe go in an evening and uh, just do some work there. Yeah, I'm happy to help if one or two people want to join me. That's great. Me yeah, too. me too. Good. All right. Uh, social media updates. Anything, Julian and Shoshana? Uh, not much. No. All right. Posted about um, our um, upcoming event, our tree planting. Um, and I posted about our meeting today and um, maybe a few other things, a few other tree related interesting things. I did check and about 90% of the followers were able to transition from our old account to our new account. Um, so oh. that, that and Instagram should be closing that down soon. Great. Oh, and I saw that it got like a little um, exciting for a few minutes. On um, I posted like this silly meme about like mulching, and somebody like tagged um, a, a landscaping company, and then like the landscaping company piped in, and then there was a little bit of back and forth. And I was keeping an eye on it to see if it didn't get too wild, and it, it resolved. It, it seemed. <laughs> That's funny. That's good, though, I guess. It actually brought up an interesting issue. I was following that, too, of uh, I think the Greenfield Tree Committee piped in saying that this one area, I think near a school, that there were these huge mounds. And the landscaper said his company didn't do it, but the trees were actually planted high in the soil. That was like, I'm not sure if that's true. So it was just mulched properly over trees that were raised, sort of in raised beds, essentially. So it's kind of curious, but. I'm sure that's not everywhere though. Most places it looks like. Of course, yeah. So. All right, good, thank you. Um, now on to the rest of the agenda, which wait, wrong thing. Um, tree nursery next steps. So um, we should probably be, as a committee, we should be doing the watering and caring for it. Alan shouldn't have to be there. He's got enough else to do. Yeah, I so agree. We, we've talked about doing a watering schedule. Um, Julian, you talked about you could mow it, things like that. Yep. Is the grass getting high there at all or not? I haven't been recently. Not, not too bad. Yeah. But it grows fast this time of year, as someone was just pointing out to me. So, yeah. I'll keep an eye on it maybe sometime in June, head over and cut it. Is it is this off Station Road? Yep. Thank you. So, um, how often would watering happen if it's not raining? Twice a week. Yes. Okay. So maybe we should. One of us can write up a schedule, and we can all sign up for shifts, or someone can sign up for more than one shift. And then while we're there, is there soil there? Yes. So the next few days, one of us, you know, a few of us can get down if we want to pick a date and we can do the soil and water them then and then figure out a schedule from there. 
We could, there's also wood chips there, so we could add, once we get the soil level correct in the grow bags, we could actually put wood chips in the grow bags to help maintain the soil moisture. On the top of the bags, eh? Yeah. Inside. Huh. Yeah. Um, well, I got my calendar here. How does people schedule look this week or next week? You're thinking an early evening? Early evening or, yeah, I probably, I'm not free this weekend, but if weekend works for most people, that would be fine. I could do the evening of the 20th. That would work for me. Anyone else? I can stop by then. Okay. Uh, Want to do seven o'clock? It might for me. I'm not sure. I'll be away all next week. Mm -hmm. Well, three or four of us are there at seven o'clock. We have an hour until dark. Does that sound good? 6.30 work? Sure, 6.30. Okay, great. 6.30 on Monday the 20th at the tree nursery. Okay. We can encourage Bennett and Sarah to come since they missed the meeting. <laughs> uh, Sarah wanted to do the planting, but her daughter Rain was sick and she couldn't make it. All right, good. Um, anything else about the tree nursery? Water mulch, oh, and then uh, we can look at it for guy wires and we may need your your advice for that, Alan, maybe not. Well, we'll look at it next Monday. Julian, maybe you can get down um, sometime later this week and just water it and check the grass. Yeah, sure. I, I could even just drive by tonight. They It looks like it's gonna rain tomorrow. Um, but yeah, totally. I'll check the grass tonight if you want. Great. Thanks. Good. All right. Uh, second Saturday workdays, we did a great success on Rambling Road. I really enjoyed that planting Saturday. Um, then I had to come home and it was a workday at home. So by then I was pretty wiped out. But uh, it was good. Uh, next month, Northampton Road, we've already figured out Misty Meadows and the um, tree for Kelly's brother, which will be sometime mid-June. So anyone have comments about that or ideas for July? Maybe uh, work day rather than getting trees in since July is usually like crazy hot, like just mulching and weeding and such maybe, like in a neighborhood that we've planted last year. Okay. I will not be available for the June or July plantings, but I think something would be good. Alan, do you want to pick a location for July then and we'll do a work day? Sure. I mean, we could do um, um, Country Corners, which is where we planted two years ago, I think it was. It's around, around um, Atkins. Yeah, and also um, the trees on... Um, East Pleasant Street by the water tank, as you miss. Yeah, that would be. We did those last year for a work day. Yeah. Last fall, right? I think so. Yeah, we did. Yeah. They need it so the UMass mowers don't kill the trees. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, someone has to choose. Take what's your favorite? Are the country corners trees getting overgrown by? Vines, speaking of vines, or no, they're getting they were getting killed by um string trimmers, yeah. Oh, um, and I, I did talk with the the couple that was at the planting on Rambling Road, um, did hook me up with their maintenance, their maintenance people. Um, so hopefully that won't be happening anymore. For these areas where we know that the trees are you know, being abused by the equipment that's used for mowing, you know, would it be worth us spending some of our money on 
protective, you know, uh, you know, those little fencing things you stick in the ground. Yeah, we discussed that, um, I think at a previous meeting and, you know, the hardware cloth sort of version of uh, creating a little wire cage around the trunk um, can work. Uh, they do make things that, you know, are designed to just for that purpose, you know, they're plastic kind of spiral springy um, devices that you wrap around the, the bottom of the trunk. Those are easier and cheaper, but they don't last. And, uh, you know, within two years, they're all broken. The string terminals will actually crack right through them. Yeah. What about, what about having- Wait by all... two years though from the, you know, will they have like good enough bark by two years that it- No. What about no. those little uh, placards, like maybe a thing that says, do not string trim here, put it in the ground. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. think they're gonna read that. Yeah. They'll run it over with the mower. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think the hardware cloth, uh, it's a bit of a nuisance. I've just been doing that to a lot of new trees and bushes I've planted. Um, and uh, it does protect them from rodents and from mowers and string trimmers. It's a little bit, it's a little difficult to use, but it works. Mm -hmm. If you use a two foot strip, it makes a, you know, an eight inch circle around. So you could probably do 18 inch strips and it comes in like 50 foot or hundred foot rolls. And uh, it's not that expensive. We could uh, have a party making them and then installing them. That might yeah, be could, we, could we get that done by our July workday and install them actually in July? Cause like, it, it seems like this is an issue that is needs attention, you know, fast. How is that something that DPW might have in stock or is that something we would buy? And Yeah, I mean, I can look and see if I have some, you know, hanging around somewhere. Why don't we approve? Um, approve an expenditure for it? If, if yeah. He does. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I agree. Like, I I guess I'd move to, like, pre-approve a expenditure to... Um, to purchase these if if Alan doesn't have any in stock. Okay, let's say $250. I think it was $100 or so for a 100-foot roll, a little more than that. So two rolls would give us a good amount of these. That Alan sounds said? good to me. Hmm? That sounds good to me. Okay, all in favor of authorizing $250? Mm -hmm. Yep. Aye. Good. All right, um, do we need to send that out to bid or is that something one of us can buy and get reimbursed? I think it's low enough. You could probably just buy it. I don't know what the threshold is. Yeah. I mean, I can buy it. It's, it's probably easier if I just buy it. Um, okay. Cause I gotta, I got to file the paperwork anyway. Um, so we, again, I'll need the, the motion and the vote. And um, there's that form that the committee is supposed to fill out to spend money out of the account. And Sarah has those forms. Um, I can contact her about that. And she and I would need to sign it. So uh, the motion was approved unanimously for spending up to $250 on hardware cloth to protect the trees. Okay. And we will, either we could do it at the workday. Some couple people can be cutting while the others are wrapping or we can try to get some people together early and do that. But that'll be not until July. So, all right, if you can get it before then, Alan, and then uh, we'll see about getting it the work done. Okay. I think that's good. Everyone like that idea? Yeah. Okay. So we have we didn't pick the location, but we will do a work day on July, whatever it is, July 13th. Pardon me for just one moment. Um, I'm getting ready to go to my second job at 6.30. I just want to thank the committee so much for your time and attention. I didn't want to just hop off without, you know, um, thanking everybody here, and I'm sure we'll be in touch via email. Okay, thank you for coming, and uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank have you. A thank you. Take care. Have a great rest of your night. Okay. Uh, so that's the presentations and discussion ongoing. Mary Maple table, the label. 
Um, yeah, I got the information from Brit, so I can write a label, but there's no place to display it, so I'm not in any rush. Um, no, we're gonna. Isn't it gonna go to town hall? Didn't I you. have not heard yay or nay yet on whether or not it's going to be in the town hall. Okay, you want to in check my it. living room right now. <laughs> People really enjoyed looking at it. Yeah, did they did? I'll pester well, them some more. Maybe it fell off their plate, and I'll, so I'll remind them. Right. This is low down on the priority list, but yeah. yeah. But it would be good to have like an answer before like people start going on their breaks for yeah. time. I'm not sure oh. if North Amherst Library would have a place for it. Somebody wanted to. Oh, that's a nice idea. Reach out to them. True. Because oh. they got that new the new digs there. Hmm. So we want to reach out to them. Um, I can reach out if I get a negative from town hall. How about that? Sounds great. Okay. But by the way, it reminds me the I really thought our booth looked really good this year at the uh, sustainability festival, and the trees we gave out were good choices, and I think we did very well. So yeah, people really were into those witch hazel ones. I think we should get those again next year. Because like people were like running to the booth, like, oh, I heard you had witch hazel. <laughs> so they were, yeah, they we gotta get those again. <laughs> All right. Good. Um next up, town tree inventory you talked about, the website update, Bennett's not here. Environmental justice neighborhood. So I spoke to Mindy again at the sustain Mindy Dom at the sustainability festival, and she's willing to talk to some of the owners of apartment places where that are in social justice neighborhoods where they need trees and we oh. we haven't had success talking to people but if we can pick a couple spots where we would like to plant trees she would go talk to the owners and see what she can do so um that was a generous offer and i'd love to follow up with her on that um yeah i'm all for that um i think Alan raised the question that it's not public land and the maintenance tends to not happen. Is that correct, Alan? Yes, so it, it needs to be, you, know, you need to have a component which is to kind of engage the people that live there. And then the other component is engaging the staff that maintain mm. the areas. If, if the staff that maintain it don't feel like they have you know, any buy-in to this, um, it's going to be difficult to get the trees to survive. Well, we can we can put the wire cages around them. That will help. <laughs> one one question I just had is, could we use those donated trees that the um, that someone donated? You were just talking about earlier, Alan. Well, we might be able to. I mean, there are grants, so we could use. Oh, okay. The the. Um, TD Bank grant. Um, DCR has funding available for environmental justice areas. We can use that type of funding. Um, so it's a matter of, you know, obviously, if you're going to get a grant, you got to apply for it in advance um, and have a plan. So, you know, we need to pick the area and work with the, the residents and the staff and come up with a plan. <clears throat> And yes, you also, so, I'd imagine, want to get buy-in from owners just so they don't cut it down once it gets to a certain yeah. size. Yeah. And we did that with Colonial Village. Um, I think we had a you know, pretty successful planting in there. Um, and the staff have they've done a pretty good job after initial, you know, initial issues. So we lost quite a few, but they actually um, planted some of their own too. And some, a lot, a lot of ours are still alive. So, yeah. Right. Um, one question is, will we have more room to plant in front of Colonial Village? And theoretically, once they build new affordable housing on Route 9, because I know they're redoing that section of Route 9. Yeah. So the um, Colonial Village, we did take down two dying sugar maple trees there. Um, they are planning on putting new housing along that stretch there, expand Clone Village. And then as far as Route 9 project goes um, with the affordable housing, there is a sidewalk project 
that was scheduled to do, I think take place this summer, it may have been put on hold. And that does include new tree locations along that stretch on both sides of the road. So. Great. Awesome. I would really like to see some new trees go in on Gatehouse Road because all the trees yeah. on that road are dying. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Is that public or private? Uh, most of the ones that are there now are, were planted on private. They were planted in the setback, right on the back edge of the public way. Um, there's no reason why, unless there's utilities there, there's no reason why we couldn't plant them a little closer and make them 10 trees. A gatehouse, um, good. Does someone, um, we need, I think the first step in terms of the environmental justice neighborhood is to choose our location, maybe two locations, and then have Mindy talk to the, the uh, owners and the staff there. And then we can, once we have a location and have some support from Mindy and from the people, then we can apply for a grant. So recommendations, or does someone want to do some research? I know we did the boulders last time. What about the next apartment down? Uh, maybe it's called South Point or Riverside. Hmm. There's a social justice map. Um, you know, the neighborhoods that are all identified. I can pull it up because I was just looking at it for a while. <laughs> that would be very helpful. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we did the boulders. We did um, that smaller. Yeah, behind the boulders. Behind the boulders. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but we were looking into doing the boulders. And that that's kind of like that area screaming for trees. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what it was called. Um, that was the one where most of the trees died. <laughs> but there were a few that were still alive when I went to look, I think, last spring. I think that was the Brooks... Brooks, yes. Brook, the brook, one brook. Yeah. Oh, perfect, great. <laughs> okay, do you want to share your screen, Ellen? Do you have that up? I'm searching. Okay. That meanwhile, we can move on. Um, UMass interns, anything new there? You haven't gotten any? No? Okay. I did have one last semester that just didn't go anywhere. Okay. And state level initiatives, Bennett did put it in last month's newsletter. Well, this month, one of them. So maybe Mindy will hear from more people for that. Significant tree ordinance, probably nothing, but Sarah's not here. And the solar bylaw group. Anything new? Uh, the CRC committee of the town council community resources committee has having their discussion of it on Thursday, I believe. Um, and the planning board chair wrote an article recently in the Amherst Current. It's like an online blog place um, for those who haven't heard of it. And basically offered his perspective on how the planning board um, had gone through the solar bylaw. All right, so that is the agenda. Um, yeah, go ahead, Great. I wanted to give an update on the Bee City. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so Alan, let me know that Guilford Mooring and DPW are mm. sensibly on board with moving forward with, um, the B city initiative. Uh, and so I prepared and submitted the application the pre-application, so they ask that you prepare it and submit it before the town formally adopts or re passes a resolution, um, just to make sure that you've done it right. So I prepared that and I submitted it, and the national folks running this B City stuff have approved it and said it is ready to be presented um, to our local government. I reached out to the president of the or chair of the town council. Um, with the draft resolution, um, they provide a template for it. So I just kind of filled everything in, um, and let her know what the hope was. And she forwarded the draft resolution to the council 
And um, one council member, uh, I'm trying to remember who, let me see. Um, it is uh, Pat, Patricia DeAngelis De um, has agreed to serve as the council sponsor for the resolution. Um, and so the next thing that needs to happen is that it needs to be put into some different kind of format, and then it will be put on the town council agenda, um, which will hopefully be soon. I don't know if it can happen in time for the next meeting, but it seems that all things are moving forward with Amherst becoming the second B city in Massachusetts. Yay. Yeah. Is there anything we need to do for that? Uh, there's not anything we need to do right now. So I had asked them and I let Alan know this, the, the national B city folks, I said, would it be okay if the, you have to have a town committee that serves as the home for the work being done for B city. And I said, could our tree committee, um, you know, fill that role? And they said, yes. And so the application, um, does require information or did require information on everybody on the committee and all of that. Um, so I, I just filled that out. Um, but there's nothing, there's nothing else they need right now. And there's really nothing that needs to be done in order for it to get passed. And the, in the first year, um, what they require is something about providing a, um, a native plant list doing like one educational outreach event that talks about pollinators in some way and um, uh, providing a list of places where you can buy native plants. And that's, that's basically it um, for the first year. So, you know, I can follow up on what comes next, you know, if and when the resolution is passed, but um, it seems that everything is on track. That's great. Can I add one thing, Henry, to that? Yeah. So there is a $300 um, fee, registration fee. Is, it in, um, or is that one time only, or is that every year? Do you know? Um, that's a good question. I think the application fee of $300 is a one-time thing, but I don't know how much it is after that. Um, I can look into that. I know that the amount is based on the, the population size of the town or city. Um, so, you know, it does go much higher for larger towns and cities, um, but in our population range, it's $300. Okay. So we would need to find out where that money, the $300 is going to come from. Um, it could come from the Shade Tree Committee's uh, tree fund. Um, or otherwise we need to figure out, you know, which, you know, DBW or somebody's gonna come up with $300. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, well, assuming we solve that, um, we could put it as just a regular agenda item and check in every month, you know, as things come up for that. I don't think that would add too much to our workload. Do we want to spend 300 from the committee for that? I'm a little hesitant to say if we would do that, but. Perhaps it would give us an opportunity to um, include the community to um, give us a uh, tangible support for our, uh, this project. I mean, I, I think that is a good idea. You could fundraise for it individually. Um, through the committee, if you will, you could also do like a GoFundMe or something like that. I'd be hesitant to just sort of use the committee funds outright for it um, without any sort of effort around that, just because as much as I personally support the idea, um, I guess we are the tree committee. So, I mean, there is some intersect between bees and trees, but it feels a little outside our wheelhouse to spend that much money for. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe the town council will throw in three hundred dollars then. You know, you when I talked to Paul, I talked to Paul Bachman about it at the 
sustainability fest and I mentioned the $300 and he said, oh, that's no problem. We can take care of that. Because I told, I said, I'll pay for it myself if that's the barrier. Um, you know, so I think maybe it makes sense to to ask the town to cover it first and then get creative if we need to. But um, my students and I also ran um, an insect related event this past weekend, which is why I wasn't at the planting. And we did get um, more than a hundred people signing to say that they're interested in in supporting the Bee City initiative. Um, and we have their emails um, and names and they wanna be kept up to date. Um, as well as people from several other towns and colleges and universities that are interested in promoting this in their own communities. Um, and I just wanted to point out to Julian's point, it's it's not just about bees, it's about insects more broadly. And bees are just kind of like the charismatic poster poster insect um, uh, that they use, you know, I think because it's also, you know, they're playing off Tree City um, too. So um, yeah. Um, I think that you could probably collaborate with the library to set up a fundraiser because the library is interested in working with the tr tree committee a lot anyways. And like, I think even with everything that's going on over there, I think there's enough volunteer power to make a decent fundraiser, at least like a fundraiser area in like the lobby area or even an event where people will come and potentially donate for the $300. Yeah, I mean, I think if the committee is not interested in supporting that with our funds, I think we could raise $300 in a day if we needed to. So I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about that. Okay, well, let's find out if there's additional fees ongoing and um, let's keep moving forward with that. Yep, sounds good. Thank you, Arwen. Yeah. All right, anything else? I got the map up. Okay. Any, I'm not sure how helpful it will be, but... Um... So it's more just grouped by, I don't know, they didn't put in the um, streets, so... I guess it's more, I'm just looking here. Yeah, so it looks like it's mostly North Amherst, but of course that's where the university is too, so. Yeah, so this looks like census tract data and and mm -hmm. it's always very confusing in Amherst in particular because it does correlate strongly with where students live because they're reporting their individual incomes, which always fall below the poverty line. So, mm -hmm. or tend to. Yeah. So this is, yeah, the 2020 environmental justice population. Yeah, like some of this, I'm just looking in here and seeing like Amherst, like I see the um little group here where the apartment complexes are. And then it says like, an area in Amherst Woods or an area in North Amherst isn't an environmental justice community to that same extent, which sort of goes in contrary to what I think when I see the different neighborhoods, but that's just my take. Yeah, the the resolution of the data is too, it's not fine enough to yeah. be useful. Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing when you look at like, you know, food, food deserts in Amherst, it's, it's the students throw it off. And this is why Amherst routinely shows up on lists of like the 10 um, you know, most poverty stricken towns in Massachusetts. Yeah. So one, one, I mean, one approach that my, this student who I was working with last semester, what we did is we looked at, um, the public housing units in Amherst and, uh, tried to go from there and see which ones might use trees because those are not students. Um, so I do have a, a lit, I mean, I think everybody knows what they are, but there are there are there's a list of all of them and where they are. And kind of our next step was to go um and um see, you know, go on foot and see like which areas could use more trees and then start a dialogue with community members to see if they would be interested in supporting that. 
So does someone want to start that, go to a couple of these places and look around? And once we've identified a couple of places, we can approach Mindy to... So, but like I said last month, it's going to take somebody to be sort of the lead on this. Um, I mean, I was going to say, I can go look around at the, you know, we came up with a, a list of them. Um, yeah, if you have the list. Yeah. And I then would... we could go check, you know, go, go scope it out yeah. and see which areas could benefit from, from trees. Because some of the ones you can see clearly from, you know, a major road seem like they have quite a lot of trees already. Um, so I can, sh I think I did share that list at some point a while ago, but I can share it um, again and then people could go together or we could go individually and go from there. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Why don't you share that list to start and... Uh... All right, anything else? Any other comments from the public? Let's see, is, uh, who else is still here? Natalie, you have any other comments? No? All right, well, thank you everyone. Uh, Britt, if you can get me the minutes as soon as you can, that'd be great. And then uh, we'll see you oh. all next month or sooner. Oh, we'll, we'll see you in next Monday on the uh, the twentieth for the tree nursery work. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I'll miss that one too. <laughs> it's all right. It's getting in the way of my volunteer work. <laughs> bye, everybody. Okay, yeah. bye. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.